Hello and welcome to part two in our character animator series. So in part two or chapter two as I'm going to refer to it, we're going to break apart and start creating our own puppet. So last week we sort of looked at a kind of general overview and introduction to the software uh, in its kind of broader sense. Um, but today we're going to start deconstructing what makes up the head section, what it is we need to consider and the naming conventions we will need to follow. So to sort of help on a journey, we're going to actually uh, again use one of the templates that are provided uh, by the software to start to break down how it's created. So when we get into our next part or part B and we start generating our own head assets, we basically have an understanding of what it is we need to name things, how we need to layer and organize our files. So here we have the Stardust Cats again. And like I said, we're going to be focusing on largely the head. So we're going to be organizing the left, right, front, up and down, the eyes, the nose, the mouth, um, that general structure. We're not going to worry too much um, initially with things like hair, dangle, drag, or sort of any advanced stuff. That's going to kind of come in uh, once we get past the triggers and we kind of start looking at more complex things towards the end of this pipeline. So with the character Stardust uh, loaded, I'm just gonna open this up in Photoshop and we're gonna look at how this is being constructed and what we need to name our assets. So here we have the character in Photoshop, our PSD file. So if you remember back to last week, I said that character animator takes your .psd files and it takes your, uh, your layers and then incorporates that into character animator and it basically tags things like the eye, the pupil, the nose, etc. these landmarks to the software to start to track them. Hence why you can see all these dots around my face. So we're just going to focus on the head. So I'm going to turn off everything that's uh, not related to that. And we're just going to look at what core aspects we need to start generating and the naming conventions we will have to follow. So you'll notice that the way that these structures tend to be done is we tend to have things in group folders. So the reason we have things in group folders is, for, well, twofold. One, it makes it easier for somebody who wants to pick this up later on to be able to understand your structure. And two, it kind of also makes it easier for the software to be able to understand component parts and the kind of uh, hierarchy of things. So we have our puppet. Uh, we have the character's name, which is, which is a subfolder of that folder, and then we have our head. So if we drop down our head section, and we're just going to focus uh, largely on the frontal, so we're not going to worry about left or right um, so much when we can start to the construction stage. So if we open up our frontal folder, and you'll notice that we have a vast variety of subfolders within that. Now. Everything, you'll notice that some of these are named with a plus symbol. So anything that's named with, for example, plus ear. So let's just drop this down. Uh, will be when we go back into our rig. We'll have a, uh, sorry, we'll have this little crown icon next to. And as we kind of said last week, uh, the kind of crown indicates it being a kind of root group controller or a sort of um, main focus control group uh, data so by basically having that little um, crown icon that sort of denoting figure it, under it allows us to understand that that is important it's going to be something that we're going to want to control it's going to be something that software is going to be looking at actively so we um, when we name our assets within our head structure we will need to name them in this very concise way so um, by default, if we name things within our Photoshop file the way they are um, understood, i.e. what it's looking for is certain name conventions, uh, if we name those conventions correctly, once we bring that Photoshop file into Capture Animator, it would automatically tag things. So, for example, if we go to our left eye and we just look at our general default uh, eye layer. So we have our left eye, which is plus left eye. We have plus pupil, and then we have left eyeball plus right eye, etc., etc. So by having these 
naming conventions laid out that way, it should mean that when we bring it into Capture Animator, it will automatically um, start to tag them with these tags over here. So if we sort of look at this eyeball here, left eye, you'll notice that over in our tags property, it has this left eye tagged already. So it's looking to track that, it adding the behavior of that to that um, image asset. If it doesn't do that and we don't have our naming conventions correct, we will have to potentially manually tag these things. So just bear that in mind when we start the generation process in part B of this uh, chapter. We, um, we, so when it comes to things like eyes, we're going to have our default eye expression. We, if anything we have, any blinks that we have, we also have to have as separate images. So if we look here, we have our blink. Now, because this blink is going to be an animated blink, so instead of it just going, uh, sorry, let me just switch back to here so you can see. So instead of it switching from it being open, close, so just swapping between two images, by having this um, five, four, three, two sort of structure, we can actually have it animate through those frames and tween between them. So instead of it just being on off between the two images, it'll actually go on and then play through and then off. So play like a sequence. So if we remember and look at things like um, in After Effects or in Character Animator, or sorry, this is Character Animator, uh, Spark, sorry, how we have image sequences and it'll play through them um, in order. At those, each of those keyframes sort of will make the animation smoother rather than just being on off. So by default, when we generate these assets, we want anything that's not going to be there for the default um, neutral expression to be off. And then as things start activating like blinks or certain mouth gestures activate, we want them to then turn on. And we'll look at how to create smooth tweening um, once we start to again further down the pipeline. So another thing that's input kind of one of the more important aspects of the face, the most emotive part, the part that can kind of cause us the um, biggest headache really, I suppose, will be when we start to look at the mouth region. So if we look here, we have our mouth. And the, this is a bit more complex than what we're possibly actually going to be doing. We're not going to be generating tweening animations for every mouth movement. We're actually just going to be getting flipping between the kind of a, u, e, a, u kind of expressions, our mouth general images. So every time we talk, it's looking for those certain um, pitches, those frequencies, and then swapping to show that image that's um, according to that or respective of that. So this is where a little bit of animation knowledge comes into play. So we will need to um, basically look at the general expressions or facial mouth movements that are tracked or expected. So I'll flash an image of um, kind of a reference image for facial or mouthful gestures. Um, that You'll find that having one of those to hand when we start designing the assets is going to be super key. And again, we want to just by default have our neutral expression first and then have the software change it. And if we go back over to our rig, if we name them the correct names, we should be able to have it sort of manually pick up. If it doesn't, we can always auto assign them or manually assign them to the different mouth for expressions that we will need to flip between. So what I'm going to um, do is you'll find that in the video description, I will basically generate a kind of list or a kind of Photoshop template, um, so to speak, to work from that will have the groups and the naming conventions for each of those assets. And what we're going to do is we're going to be using that template to build our assets for each of those areas. So we're going to have a group that's going to be dedicated to each eye. We're going to have a group that's dedicated to the mouth and another group that's dedicated to the expressions of that mouth, so to speak, within that um, folder. We don't need to worry too much about the nose. The nose doesn't tend to be that emotive. It tends to be quite static or than flaring potentially. Um, and again, their general head shape, again, doesn't matter too much as long as it can track um, the general outline. 
So again, down in the description, we'll have a Photoshop template that will have the naming conventions that we're going to be using. When we finish that process throughout this entire chapter, if there's any problems, again, we will potentially have to manually tag. But as long as we name things correctly and understand that head references head in the rig, our left eyeball references left eyeball, left pupil, left pupil, etc., then it shouldn't be too difficult to understand. So I'm going to be uh, generating my assets in between um, Illustrator and Photoshop. So I'll be using Illustrator to generate my more um, smooth vectors, my kind of crisper uh, designs, then bringing that into Photoshop to get the layer hierarchies correct, and then building up from that. So we'll be going through, um, in this chapter, we'll be going through each part. So we'll be working in part B, largely regenerating just a general head shape. And then in each sub part of this chapter, we'll be doing dedicated to eyes, mouth, nose, ears, etc. So we'll do it that way. So each of these little bite-sized chunks will hopefully build up to our generic basic face. And once we've created that basic generic face structure, we can always spend more time to make it a lot more cool or advanced or kind of make it more um, enriching. But again, we need to start off with the basics before we can sort of get to the more cool stuff. Anyway, so see you in the next part. Thank you for watching and I'll see you again soon. Goodbye.